So I want to thank you guys for coming in today, and, um, and I'm excited to be handing off this check for $3,000. I mean, from, from our team, from Super New The biggest amount that I've seen in four years that I've got at this store, so I am so thankful that we can do this and be part of the work that you guys do in the community. So thank you all for your hard work and what you do, because Personally, I know how much of an impact it makes, and I really appreciate all that you guys do. And and you guys are tremendous community partners, and, and if I could, I'd like to just take uh, a couple of minutes just to tell you about what we did in the last fiscal year, um, and it was a presentation that I recently made to the town uh, meeting, actually, at the firehouse, uh, and with the select board, um, but I've kind of adapted it a little bit for our Share the Love event today. Uh, because I think it's really important to know how much work we're doing and then how the super funds are able to be applied within that. So, if it's okay, I'll, uh, and they, they probably heard it before, but, uh, <laughs> or if you've seen it on Cat TV, I mean, uh, if you watch the, I'm sure you all watched the video from Cat TV from the town meeting, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway, this might be redundant, but. Uh, so anyway, for uh, 2023, one of the things that I like to talk about, though, is that how we say, one of my sayings is the foundation of a great community is only as strong as how we treat our most vulnerable. It's very, very important for, for a really great community to have that strong foundation because the vulnerable will take care of. Uh, Brock Community Action has a two-pronged approach to alleviating poverty, and uh, one of those is the path forward, which is very important. So we have a lot of programs that are both our path forward programs. And then the other, of course, is crisis assistance. And I know that that's been particularly uh, important in the last three years that we look in the rearview mirror with the pandemic that we've all slugged through. But now maybe as important as ever with the high costs of goods and services because of inflation. So um, some of the examples of the dollars and cents of some of the programs that we have conducted. And what I want to, the one caveat I would make with this is that when we, and these programs talk about a lot more money than this, but this money is critical because it's because we can use it where these don't apply and people or people may not qualify. And that's significant because they still have a need, but maybe they don't fit the requirements of the program that are uh, that we live with them with it, uh, for the state and federal program. And that allows us to be a little more nimble and assist people rather than saying, no, sorry, we can't help you which is the last thing we want to say. This is the great team from Bennington, by the way, that, uh, that does all this hard work that I'm going to talk about right now. So, um, But one of the things I wanted to talk about was our food shelf. You know, Steve Coggeshall runs the food shelf every day. He's Mr. Coggeshall around here to a lot of people because he was their high school teacher. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's <right>. History. <laughs> How many years, Steve? 33, 33 wow. years. Um, but um, so what we did was we expanded that during the pandemic from three days to five days a week. We continued that post pandemic and we go, we actually expanded thanks to Steve another hour a day. So we're doing 16 hours a week, including a senior food shelf on Friday afternoons, which we think is really important as well. Just carve out their own time. For um, we operate, uh, and last year we did with the crisis of fuel, crisis. Fuel Assistance Program for the State of Vermont. Last year at Bennington, we provided $115,000 of crisis fuel assistance, which was really, really significant. We're talking about heating, what we call heating, uh, feeding, and clothing people. That's three of our sort of fundamental programs. But we're also dealing a lot with the homeless folks that have been in the motels. And um, we've helped homeless families living in motels or elsewhere but by providing over $46,000 of what we call rapid resolution housing assistance. And we also master leased three Bennington apartments to transitional homeless families. And what we do is we transition to the permanent state of We master these three apartments for that purpose. And that's what Liz does. Uh, for 33 small businesses Adam, in the Bennington area, we provided $5,000 recovery. And this is part of making that path forward from it. Um, including four of those that were startup businesses. A total of $165,000 in grants to Bennington's smallest businesses. And um, those are considered micro-business. They're five employees or less, so they really are from us small businesses. 
Uh, one of my favorite stories, though, is the Switchback Brewery. We started in Brooklyn, Vermont. A lot of people know that beer. So, um, they started out as one of the micro businesses at our colleague shop in Burlington. Mm -hmm. As a, a one man with a passion for, you know, a, and talent for making a good beer, and ended up selling the company to its employees with 30 employees and million dollar payroll. It was started as a micro business. So, yeah. I testified in my pillar after him, and I was so glad. No, I testified before him to send an economic development in my pillar once. And I was so glad I went before him. He was really good. And I said, that would have been an impossible act of all. <laughs> We we're responsible for implementing the state's home weatherization program, and those folks are not with us today. Um, it's a large team of people. We have multiple crews out every day actually doing home weatherization for the folks in Western um, And it's top to bottom. It's about an average of $10,000 per home. But they're literally out in the field today actually doing that work, so they're not here with us. But they're, they're here in spirit. Um, and so last year we provided uh, $325,000 in free home weatherization services just to Bennington Town. This included emergency furnace repair, by the way, and replacement, uh, and oil tank repair and replacement, too, which has become a real issue with the as we know. Uh, a thing here called red tag. They red tag furnaces or uh, oil tanks that you can't use. Oh, boy. Yeah, which in Vermont, that's a thing. That's a yeah, that's an issue. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, as a critical focus of our efforts at Brock Community Action, we have positioned our staff uh, which is uh, uh, Nora and Grace, for instance, in addition to Liz, to provide application assistance to avoid eviction, disconnections, foreclosures. Uh, Christine is doing some of this now herself, too, right here in the Bennington office. We worked in partnership with the State Housing Authority, BSHA, to assist them in providing over $6 million in emergency rental assistance last year. Uh, this kept people housed during the pandemic. It actually went to the landlord, so we're kind of getting a twofer with that because we stabilized landlords at a time when they might not have been able to collect rent. We also kept people housed during that period in the same way. Uh, it also went to uh, municipalities and utilities, so went to town and other you know, local utilities for that type of assistance that they might have been in a rear on or having trouble to handle. Uh, over $10 million uh, in total to uh, 1,263 applicants in Bennington County. These rents go directly, as I said, to the landlord, utility payments to the town of Bennington, and local utility companies, thus stabilizing both the tenant and owner. We worked with the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, an alphabet soup here, BFHA, to provide Bennington homeowners with mortgage arrearage and property tax and utility payments to the mortgage holders, too, which were in trouble here. Uh, up to $30,000 per applicant with that program. We provided that assistance to, through the application process to access those funds through BFHA. These, again, funds are directed to the lenders and the utility providers, the town of Bennington, and the, for such things as dealing with property taxes, water, and sewer bills. And this quick snapshot demonstrates over $6.6 .6 million to provide assistance to Bennington area residents just last year alone. Um, our organization does more, and here's my favorite commercial, which you guys are really good at, by the way. I encourage you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> and you guys are on there all the time. You do a great job with that. Uh, and um, the reason I say that is because we do pro uh, things that uh, are outside of the norm that happen on a regular basis that we then post to social media and so forth because they're happening and we can post them readily and quickly. Um, and one example of that is the Affordable Federal, it's called the Federal Affordable Connectivity Act. This is opportunity to provide people with internet connections, but in this case, the one we focused on was cell phones and smartphones, actually. So we've done over 350 smartphones with Cricket Wireless. We have actually, uh, tomorrow, Trevor? Mm -hmm. Trevor will be here tomorrow helping Hi. out. <laughs> so, so Trevor is actually in charge of all of our data for the agency, but I grow some while to jump out of the office and dive into something like this, our smartphone assistance. And we're gonna do uh, that tomorrow, as well as uh, a year of free service. One of the reasons that's important, and Grace had pointed this out to me, is because she has to be quite nimble, so does Nora, when, they're, when they've got a, a home available, an apartment that comes available, and they're working with the family, they need to be able to connect with them quickly to say, okay, it's available, are you interested, can we get you over to see it, uh, you know, to get you in there. If they can't connect with them, and it takes, they lose the opportunity, it goes faster around here. So we started focusing on their clients, who uh, they're working with, like Liz as well, 
who don't have phones, that we can get the phone and the internet service, so then when the housing opportunity becomes available, they got their number, they can call them up, and they can make that uh, housing available immediately, rather than losing the opportunity. So it's funny how these programs really do complement each other and work together, and all of them do the same. They work well together, too, and make sure the, the dies, dots, or, uh, the eyes get dotted and the teeth get crossed. And lastly, I just want to mention, uh, you know, it's been three long years navigating COVID, um, but right now it's the cost of living that's straining local families. And um, our help might be more important than ever in Bennington. And I said that with the pandemic, and I truly believe it, but what we're seeing is this surge of people that are just having a hard time making ends meet because of all of the costs of goods and services in prison and their budgets are getting tighter. And so if they pay one thing, they lack another, and so forth. Uh, for instance, they pay their utility bill and they don't have money for food. Actually, they bought the food now, they can't pay the utility bill and so forth. So we're focusing on that demographic of residents in Bennington County. Um, and that's a lot of where the Subaru money can come into play. So there are, not to get too technical, I'll just nutshell it for you, which is there are, so federal poverty level is often a standard that most of these programs are based on. And we have to live within the percentages. So they allow up to, say, crisis fuel, they allow it to be up to 200% of federal poverty level. But if you're 201%, you don't get it. That's where these funds come in. We can then say, okay, you're a little over income, but yes, we can still help you. Um, you're still clearly in need, that's established, but you don't meet the exact criteria, and we don't want you to be freezing tonight. So that's where bank and super funds, or share the love funds, from and super, et cetera, can come into play. I wanted to give you a couple of cool examples that we did. Um, locally, we developed a great relationship with our friends at Molly Stark and also Southwestern Vermont Supervisory and their favorite family engagement uh, coordinators. And there's four of them there, so five people which we're working with. And they're able to connect us with families in need, and there's a lot of families in need. Um, but you know, sometimes we can't necessarily reach them as quickly and easily as they can. Plus, they've established what the need is. Um, that that family has. So we are a resource for them, and Subaru funds have come into play many, many times because they don't fit the particular program oftentimes, but they have that critical need uh, at that moment. And one of those was warm weather clothing, which in Vermont is, again, a big deal. Yeah. Um, and so last year we provided uh, 42 families uh, from the elementary schools uh, with warm weather clothing. Um, and a new thing we started doing, they brought the need to us, and we recognized it. But a lot of families actually don't have a way to wash their clothes, and sometimes the kids will have to go to school and clothing that may not be clean. And we don't want that stigma with the child, and we can help it. So we established a relationship with Johnny's sons, and what we do is purchase preloaded wash cards, and we did 100 preloaded wash cards. Then the school distributes when you have that family in need of getting clothes washed. They can give them their card. They can go to the, one of the two locations here and get those clothes washed, dried, and, and it's enough to do two loads of laundry each time. Um, so we've come up with some creative ways to use the funds that are uh, a real need that's not addressed in some other program that's established. Um, and this last one I want to I, I share with you and Brian with you. Um, last week when we talked, uh, because there's some unusual things that occurred. We got a call from uh, Southwestern Vermont Supervisor Union, and they had uh, kind of a sad situation where a child's um, uh, father was sick and um, passed away, and it was a couple of children. And then um, the mom was out, so he had taken sick recently, and she passed. So the kids literally had had no parents uh, they're in the school system. Um, they had some family that was going to be taking them in, apparently, which is really cool. Um, but in the meantime, they had, they wanted to secure their household goods because it was all the kids had that the attachment left was what was in that home. So we, uh, they reached out to me to see if there's any way we could help with storage. And we went over here to then we sell storage rented unit number A77 uh, and got the key to it and said, bring a padlock, it's sitting there waiting for you and the family goods in there um, until you can get them over to uh, the, the 
the new home, if you will. Um, but a very sad story, but again, one of those things that you want to be able to step up and help in those situations. And because of this relationship we have with the schools, they know that they can reach us for those, for those resources and that we can sort of meet that need. Um, and so we're, we love being that connection for them and being able to do those unusual things. But that is another way that we immediately went to the Subaru funds and said, this is, this is we're going to take care of that for, for those children. We want that done. And uh, so we thank you for that. It's just, uh, you know, it, it would be so much harder to do our jobs uh, if we had to just live within the programs and the program guidelines only and everybody else on that stuff. But your funds give us the ability to, uh, to say yes and be able to help outside the lines as we call it. For people that need it back. Um, and then last, believe it or not, I'm a sailor. That's the last thing to have, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> but I want to paraphrase from Subaru's website because they say on there the Subaru loves promise. The Subaru loves promise. It means being more than a car company. It is their vision for showing love and respect to all people. It is their commitment to improving the lives around them and being a positive force in the communities in which they live and work. You truly do share the love in Bennington. Uh, we sincerely value the support of the great people at Lumber Subaru and Subaru of New England, and we thank you. No, go for it. So, um, that was probably one of the most comprehensive uh, <laughs> synopsis of what you do that I've seen in 15 years. And that was impressive. And, and I, I kept hearing in my mind dignity, respect, and ultimately hope for people. Um, we started doing this about 15 years ago uh, on a national level. You know, we had national uh, charities like the SPCA, Neil Bonnie, the National Parks Foundation. About seven, eight years ago, we realized it's important that we actually push this money down into the communities that our retailers actually here work and live in. So uh, to date, we've, we've been fortunate enough with our retail body at Subaru to put $250 million into the companies. And we're so That's proud awesome. of that. You know, I, I always say this, I've heard this a million times, like we just sell and service ours. You people take care of our brothers and sisters and me, and we are so grateful for that. That's way more important than what we're doing. Uh, but we can do it as a team, and we can do it together, and, and thank you so much for what you do. I know it's, it can be, uh, there's probably good days and bad days, but hopefully more good days and bad days, right? <laughs> so, um, anyway, thank you so much. I, ha I actually have an award, if it's okay, to give to Patrick and his team. Yeah, and Rocky from Super America. Awesome. So this is our annual uh, Love Promise Community Commitment Award. I'm just going to read the back of it because it just summarizes it perfectly. This award is presented in recognition of your outstanding commitment to your community in 20 2022. Thank you for choosing to support your local community with time, resources, and love. What we call the Chevrolet. Congratulations, Super Corporation, Super America, and Super Thinking. I mean, what's to say other than what, what you just said? It's uh, just an honor and a pleasure to be associated with this program and you know, the uh, services such as this program. All right, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.